Hey everybody, welcome to another GG.co.uk video with me, Daryl Carter. Uh, we're looking ahead again to the Saturday ITV races. Feature race is the Tingle Creek. Big, big thank you, first off, to Betway for sponsoring this video. I really do appreciate that. Thank you so, so much, guys. They've even given us a £10 free bet. So if you want to click the link below and get a £10 free bet for one of these tips that I'm going to give you on Saturday, that's definitely going to win. I know what you're thinking, he needs a haircut and he ain't found the iron. Look, it's early Friday morning, uh, we're going to get on with these videos and crack through uh, a lot of work today uh, for Sunday and, and a bit more on Saturday. But the column has pretty much written, written itself for Saturday, so we'll kick off without further ado in the 225 at Sandown, which is the Tingle Creek. This, for me, is all about Altior. How good is Altior? Is he still at the level he was performing at the last couple of years at the age of 10? He'll be 11 turning uh, the turn of the year to the festival. So this really does shake up a lot of things if he is beaten in here. Um, I don't want him beaten. The king is back. Let's hope he gets through this race safe and sound and he absolutely hoses up and goes on to champion chase glory again. Politolog is in here, probably his biggest danger. Been behind him multiple times though. Um, and I don't think he's going to improve at the age of nine. He does go well fresh. Probably the biggest danger at round 9-2. Grenatine is the interesting one at 5-1. to one. However, I really like this horse, but I think he wants 2.5 miles. He needed every single yard of the uh, Howden Gold Cup trip at Exeter. I'm just wondering if a speedily run 2 miles round, uh, round Sandown is going to be up his street. That was 2 miles, 1.5 furlongs at Exeter, and the finish is all the way uphill. So... It just would concern me that he might need to step up and trip. Rouge Fifth, don't talk to me about Rouge Fifth. He's a handicapper. Not having him in there as a grade one chaser against Altior, as uh, short as eight to one. His, his handicap win at Cheltenham, his final circuit time was slower than Galvin, who ran in the three mile race. God, and he was slower three out to the finish. So don't let your eyes fool you. Rouge Fifth is a handicapper. Sorry, Harry Whittington, but I'm not having it. Brewing up a storm. It's a very similar story. He's got a lot to find. He's a lovely horse, but he's got a lot to find. And, and two and a half miles just might be his trip. Castle Grace Paddy, excellent fresh. Beat a Pluto last time, but it's been behind Altior previously. And I don't think he's going to be improving at nine. So, providing Altior runs to the level that we know he can, this should be his for the taking. Five to six on looks about right to me. Altior, it's all about Altior in the Tingle Creek. The 130 is the first race. On ITV, it's the Beecher Chase or the Betcher Chase, whichever you like to call it. Uh, Kimberlite Candy heads the market, and rightly so. Uh, off a mark of 153 this year, though, it's going to be a it's going to be very difficult uh, and returning off a 329 day layoff, of course. LeBroy is very interesting. He's nine pound lower than last year when beating 20 lengths fifth, but uh, was beating 20 lengths seventh. Sorry, beating 20 lengths seventh, but he's nine pound lower, uh, and he's had a run under his belt this time around, so he could just throw up. Well, not so much of a surprise, he's second favourite, but you know, he could just be the bet at six to one, really. Walking the meal was rock solid around these fences, but we all know his aim is definitely going to be the Grand National. He's a 10 year old now. Um, he's had a, he's had a little spin over um, uh, Ascot, uh, beating 29 lengths, but obviously he comes alive over these fences, so he's a completely different horse. So you can sort of write off anything he's done. The likes of Ranzate, Yala Enki, Kusa, Stibla, Khaled, Mad. Um, give me a copper. There are so many horses in here that could have a say. This is not really a betting race for me, to be honest. Uh, more of a just a watch and enjoy. Uh, the 150 is the Henry VIII Novices Chase. This is a really tricky little race. Um, normally, I am absolutely zoned in on these novices and I know exactly who's going to go close or who we should be on or reasons to take one on. This year, it's a little bit different. There's not been much value in any of the novice chases. Um, Hitman's very interesting, but... His jumping is just a little bit suspect for me. I don't know if he's going to enjoy these railway fences at Sandown and this, this real stern test of jumping at uh, pace. He was really good at Foss Lass. He was 40 lengths ahead of the Nauts 115 race. Uh, there's a form line over in France that ties in with James de Burley, the horse that everyone's been talking about that's gone to Willie Mullins for Simon, um, Simon and Isaac Manure. Um, I'm just not entirely convinced about Hitman's jumping. Uh, that would just concern me here. Um, so, Fallers Insurance maybe on Hitman. I think he could well be the best horse in the race. Phoenix Way is very interesting. Uh, I think Harry, Harry Fry has played a blinder here. Um, this is going to cut up. Uh, the ground's going to get soft. This is going to cut up on the front end. They're going to try and take each other on. I can see it now. It's going to be a bit of a burn-up. And if it turns out that way, it's going to turn into a test of stamina. 
And Phoenix Way is a two and a half mile, three, three mile horse. He might be run off his feet in the early stages, but he might be staying on strongly up that stand downhill. So he's very interesting at 12 to one. There's a little angle in there if they do go off pretty hard. I think it's going to be an in running um, betting race for me. Uh, I can't have Slow Dorado Allen. Uh, I think he's too slow for this. All Mankind is very interesting. Dan Skelton likes to get his novices on the front end. And the reason for that is, is because it puts these um, novice jumpers under pressure um, when the, when one's on the front end and getting away. They tend to make mistakes in behind. They struggle to make up the ground. So Dan Skelton's got it now with his novices. And he's probably got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder from Nube Negra at this race last year. So I think All Mankind's going to be really primed for this race. It's probably been the target for him. Gar Law is the other one I do like. Um... I'm just slightly concerned about Gavin Sheehan, the way he rides, uh, way he rides chases in defences. Daryl Jacob was on here for me. I think I would just be hoping that they'd be sending him off from the front because he stays a bit further and drop him back to two miles today and just be aggressive at those fences. He's very low, he's very fast at his fences, uh, but he needs to be ridden aggressively um, and, and not just allowed to make his own mind up at fences. So that would be a concern for me with Gavin Sheehan and, and Gar Law. I watched his run ride on itchy feet. I wasn't that impressed, if I'm being honest. But I'm not a jockey, so I can't tell him how to ride these horses, of course. And I certainly am too big to get on a horse. Uh, right, 2.05. Um, uh, this is a juvenile hurdle, not one I'm going to get too in-depth with. Megan, I thought, were, was worth taking on. I didn't really enjoy... Didn't, I didn't really wasn't really blown away by the Leicester run. thought Hikonic was the one that set the standard here. Um, behind Duffelcoat at Weatherby last time. That was running quite a good time. Um, and he's had some decent horses in behind him and, and decent horses in front of him. So, you know, I thought Hikonic run, runs to a, a level, if you like, uh, and it's down to them to surpass it. I thought 13 to 8 on Megan was pretty short, but not a race I'm going to get involved in again. The 240 at Aintree is the Many Clouds Grade 2 chase. Santini is one that I'd personally be taking on. A lot of people have been saying that Santini is a banker this week. I'm not so sure first time up. He is not the fastest, and this speed track at Aintree just might not suit him. First time up. Frodon's very interesting if he gets a soft lead out in front. And so is Native River. I don't think Native River is regressive as a lot of people say. And he does like it here at Aintree. He beat Black Horton by 33 lengths on his last on his penultimate star here under Richard Johnson. Um, the pair get on really, really well. Native River for me just could be a little bit of a final swan song for Native River this season. Um, and he could just be fully tuned up for this race. And Frodon is obviously the other danger if allowed a soft lead out on the front end. Um, so Santini for me, 5-4 to four is a little bit short. I'll be taking that on. But, you know, each to their own. The 3 o'clock at Sandown. Cloudy Glen uh, looks rock solid. The way he won that race at Fontwell last time out. He absolutely tugged the arms of Charlie Deutsch throughout the whole of the race on heavy ground. And uh, he just cantered away one by 13 lengths. He was really impressive. Always like this horse. He's always shown that little bit of spark. He's always had a bit about him, a little bit of class. Finally, he just might be coming into his own now as a seven-year-old over these extreme distances. Um, I think he's going to be very tough to beat, even off this um, 11 pound high mark. I do like Cloud again. He's a very, very nice horse. And I think Classic Ben is the other one. He's probably his biggest danger. Who has finished him behind him at Sandown last year. But he's a little bit better off of the weights now. Um, so I think top of the market there are the two to focus on for me. The others have a few question marks to answer. Shamro Santos is interesting at a big price. Um, loves these staying trips. Uh, and does enjoy soft ground and heavy ground. So it uh, could be a little bit of a flying new with Shamro Santos, but I think the top of the market, Cloudy Glen and Classic Ben, is where you want to be looking. Um, 3.15, I've got to rush through this race because I want to get to my final final race on TV because I've got a three-point bet. Um, uh, the Grand Sefton is not a betting race for me. It's more of a watching race. Um, I like the looks of uh, the likes of Huntsman's Son, um, and a couple of others in here, but I just really can't bring myself to have a bet. Pink Eyed Pedro is another one that I'd be quite keen on for for David Brace, but I've looked through and I've looked through and I've looked through and I just can't find myself a bet. And I can't really get too overexcited about these races. The one race I can get overexcited about though is the December handicap hurdle listed race, final race on the card at Sandown. Um, I'm really excited for Mr. Coffee. This horse, I've Taken 100 to 1 at the champion hurdle for this horse. Absolutely balmy, I know. I'm still very much on the Epiton train, but 
I just think Mr. Coffey's got so much talent. He's ten pounds higher than his last um, than his seasonal return victory here at Sandown when absolutely coasting away by five lengths. He did everything wrong that day. He played up beforehand. He's sweating. He pulled Nico's arms off for most of the race, and he careered clear of his rivals. This is a slightly better race, but it's not that much stronger. And he is only £10 higher. I thought he was valued for much more than a £10 rise there. I think he's got loads more to come, this horse. If he can settle better, uh, hopefully the, the first run of the season has knocked the edge off him now and he's a little bit more settled. This horse is very, very good. He's much better than a mark of 138. He should take all the stopping in here. He won't mind soft ground. He's a course winner last time out. There's just so much to like. Mr. Coffey is a 3 Point winner this weekend at Sandown. Going to get stuck into that. Nine to four is plenty of value for me, in my opinion. So that rounds off the day. Hopefully the final race on TV is where we get all our money in, in the pot. Uh, get the Christmas money in early, even on a nine to four shot. But uh, thanks very much for listening. Guys, that's all we've got time for this week. Um, Remember, Betway sponsored this video, so a huge thank, thank you to them. If you want a £10 free bet and you want to just chuck it on Mr. Coffee, my free point bet, uh, in the 335 at Sandown, click the link below and grab that free bet. Guys, check the column out at 5.30 tonight on Friday night uh, on gg.co.uk, and I'll speak to you very soon. I am so excited for Mr. Coffee.